This morning I'm downtown. I'm going to take some photographs, some pinhole photographs with my Holga wide pinhole camera. It takes 120 film and I thought I'd just share a little bit about the camera and see what we come up with. The Holga Wide Pinhole Camera, or 120WPC as it's officially called, is a simple all plastic camera in the tradition of the original, super popular square format Holga. Controls are minimal, and on the left side you'll find the shutter button, which has a very important thread for a cable release, and of course the featured item is the pinhole lens. As you can see from the printed specs on the lens, it's a 0.3mm pinhole with an f135 aperture. It has a very simple, non-locking horizontal shutter. The camera shoots 120 roll film and another cool feature is the choice of the two different image formats that it offers. Using the 6 by 9 centimeter mask, you can get 8 photos on a roll of 120, or by using the super wide 6 by 12 centimeter panorama mask, you'll get 6 shots on a roll. I'm going to go with the 6x12 panorama mask since that, to me, is one of the great appeals of the camera. For film, I'll be using Ilford Delta 100 speed black and white. Delta isn't known to have the widest latitude of the black and white films, so it may not be the perfect choice, but it's what I happen to have on hand. I normally shoot Ilford HP5 and the other cameras, but I think a 400 film might result in shutter speeds that are less than a second long and just too hard to time manually with the cable release. Loading the film, the film spool feels just a bit loose, so using the end of the film box folded will give it a snug fit and snug feed. Now the film counter is a bit tricky. We need to advance the film two frames for every shot, regardless of which mask is used. So setting the pointer to 12 will actually give us six panorama shots, and setting it to 16 will give eight exposures in the 6x9 format. It isn't at all intuitive, and it definitely takes some thought. Cable release in. Tripod adapter on. The camera has both a bubble level and a crude framing guide to get you in the ballpark. Zeroing out the bubble level can get you started, but you'll still have to make some guesses from there regarding composition. For calculating exposure, there's a guide on the back of the camera, but I'm going to use a free Android app called Light Meter, set with the ISO at 100 and the f-stop at f128, which is the closest choice to the camera's actual f135. Since I don't want the bright sky to cause underexposure from the meter, I'll point the meter at the ground, which indicates a 3 second shutter speed. There is a thing called reciprocity failure that can affect film speed with long exposures, but I'm not concerned about it here. Count the exposure, 1001, 1002, 1003. There's just no way of knowing exactly what you're going to get with the pinhole camera and I want to say that's part of the fun of it, but I'm going to wait to see the images before I say that. Back home, let's develop the role in Kodak HC110 Dilution B because that's also what I just happen to have on hand. Here's the part I love the first look at the negatives, and I couldn't be happier with the exposures. I think they look great. Unfortunately, the last exposure is cut off at the end of the roll, and now looking back, I know exactly what happened. Remember when I said the frame counter is tricky and you have to advance two frames for every exposure? Well, I advanced two frames for the very first exposure, starting on frame two, which I shouldn't have done. 
rather than setting to frames two, four, six, eight, etc., I should have used frames one, three, five, seven, etc. Other than that, though, the frame spacing looks great. The 6x12 images require using 120 negative files with three negative file rows and not four rows, which are the more common ones. I was just lucky and happened to have these. To scan the negs on my Epson V550, only one of the long frames will be fully visible in the neg carrier. So after scanning that frame, the negative will have to be rotated so the other one can then be fully visible to the scanner. I think the scans are looking good, so let's jump to the final images, give them a look, and see what we can learn. Here's image number one, and I'm really happy with the framing for a first attempt. One thing I don't really like is the hard vignette on the left side where a part of the shutter mechanism is cutting into the frame. Some people might be fine with this, but I wish it wasn't so sharp and abrupt, so I'll look into what that might be and hopefully tame it down. Image 2, I love the composition, though it seems to be slanting downhill a bit much. I might want to keep a sharper eye on the bubble level, but this definitely works. This one feels like it's slanting too, but the buildings appear straight up and down, so I think it's a matter of me just learning about what the natural distortion from the lens is doing. On this one, I really remember being methodical about framing, using the bubble level, centering, and I'm really happy with how it all worked out. Even without a viewfinder, it's a symmetrical, balanced composition. This is my personal favorite shot from the day, and I feel like it all came together here. The way the overpass frames the shot, the crosswalk pole in the foreground, and the overall composition. There's depth to the photo and a really strong central subject. I also think the hard vignette is hidden in the shadows on the left side, so it isn't a distraction to me in this shot. And lastly, here's the photo that got cut off at the end of the roll. I think the framing would have been good if it hadn't been cut off, so lesson learned there. I was really interested to see what the lens sharpness would be like, and it's okay for smaller prints, but it's definitely a pinhole look. You get sharpness on the objects both close to the lens all the way to infinity, but you're not going to render really fine detail with it. And that's my look at the 120 Holga wide pinhole camera. I hope that if you have been interested in pinhole photography or this camera in particular, that this video helped you answer some of those questions. I enjoyed the camera. I'm going to keep using it. It's a little bit of a stretch for me to think in terms of this wide panorama format. So I'm enjoying seeing how I might uh, look differently at things by using this camera further. If you have enjoyed this video, I hope you'll join me over on my Instagram feed at Jimmy T Photo. I would love to see you there and consider giving this video a like and subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, get out there and shoot, have some fun, and enjoy your cameras.